Do you want a Curvet that whistles? How about one that whines? You want it to be fast as hell and reliable and come with a warranty too? From being early pioneers of turbocharging to building and homologating race cars for GM, this is everything you need to know to get up to speed on Callaway. The car guys, not the golf guys. Before we get into it, I'd like to thank NOS Energy Drink for partnering with Up to Speed and me, James Pumphrey. Boom diggity, that is delicious. You know, it also smells great. Mm. But what I love most is all the energy it gives me. Listen, I know it's impossible, but I really do feel like this NOS Energy Drink is making me look cooler. Anyway, back to the show. Reeves Calloway started out as a race car driver and he was a good one. He was an SCCA national champula in Formula V, but probably the only business tougher than making cars is racing them. And he didn't have the money to keep going. So like many broke racers, he took a job as a driving instructor at Bob Bondurant's race school in 1973. Working at a driving school was fun, but the BMW 3 Series they provided were slow, and that got Reeves a little bummed. BMWs used to be slow? Almost everything used to be slow. The oil crisis made big engines cry at every gas pump, and new emissions controls sucked out any performance potential that was left. Car enthusiasts were sad, and there was definitely a desire for uh, fuel-efficient cars that were really good. I mean, yeah, but no. Uh, you say it like every episode. Oh, <laughs> right. Oh, my power baby. My power baby indeed. In 1977, Reeves realized his driving students were trying to kill him and he quit instructing. On his way out, he borrowed one of the E28 BMWs and fabbed up a custom turbo setup in his garage in Old Lyme, Connecticut. Then he loaned the car to Don Sherman from Car and Driver. Don wrote a glowing review about how much more fun it was to drive with all that added power. The article also made it sound like Reeves was in the business of making turbo kits, which he wasn't. But BMW owners started calling him anyway, trying to buy the kits. Sure, I can, yeah, I can build one of those. Oh, you want three, huh? Yeah, I'm looking at them right now. What are you doing, Reeves? You got yourself in some hot soup now. <laughs> if people wanted turbo kits, then buy Bavarian Bratwurst. Reeves was gonna make them turbo kits. He rounded up some fronds and they got to work on a new business, Callaway Turbo Systems in his rural New England garage. Over the next several years, Callaway expanded and cranked out turbo kits for BMW, Mercedes, Audis, Porsches, and Volkswagens, just cranking them out. Left and right, people were hungry for more In the meantime, while the Callaway crew wasn't making turbo kits, they made an IndyCar engine entirely from scratch in less than a year. You know, easy, just like hobby, side gig stuff. <laughs> At the time, British Ford Cosworth engines dominated the IndyCar fields, and Callaway wanted to show that an American company could do just as well in their own American racing series. With the help of an engine designer, Hans Herman, and a lot of money, they created a turbocharged 2.6 liter V8 that was ingeniously designed to be smaller, lighter, and easier to work on. They called it the Callaway HH or C2 because it was their second big project after the turbo business, now called C1. Okay. The engine development cash was about to dry up when car companies started to come a knocking. Deemed Project C3, Alfa Romeo commissioned a 250 hertz per twin turbo setup for the 2.5 liter V6 in its sporty GTV6. It's a great looking car. Go ahead, actually, you don't have to Google it, Colby. Ooh, that's a nice bird. I wanna roast that bad boy up, put some mashed potatoes, maybe some peas on the side of it, have myself a day, give it dinner. What? <laughs> the whole package included better suspension and brakes, a rear spoiler, and a new hood scoop. Toot toot. And it kicked the 
completely overhauled fourth gen C4 Corvette came out in 1984, 11 years before Post Malone was born. If you know anything about C4 Vets, you know they weren't particularly fast right out of the box. So chief Corvette engineer, Dave McLellan, thought GM should offer a big power upgrade. Why don't we just have this company Callaway develop a twin turbo system for us? And so began Project C4, the C4 Callaway Corvette. A totally reliable, drive it every day, automobile that also happens to have those performance standards. Chevy offered Callaway's twin turbo Corvette as a regular production option that could be ordered right from the dealer, something they've never done with any other non-GM performance modification. Corvettes ordered with the RPO B2K package rolled off the assembly line in Bowling Green, Kentucky, oh, Kentucky Cobra, and went straight to Callaway's shop in Connecticut so they could shove two snails under the hoods. The cars even came with a 12 month 12,000 mile warranty. The 1987 Callaway twin turbo Corvettes were boosted from about 230 stock Herspers to a damn near exotic for the time 345 Herspers with 460 pound feet of Turex. And they only cost about 50,000 bucks. That's about 110K today. <laughs> Almost 200 Callaway Corvettes were ordered in the first year. Over the next few years, they got more power, baby. I'm a power, baby. By the end of production in, 91, in 1991, they were pushing 403 Herspers and almost 600 pound feet of Turks. I mean, at the time, the only other car doing that was the Lamborghini Countach. <laughs> Over the next four years, they got even more power, baby. A little power, baby. By then, Callaway had already proven they weren't just another small time tuning shop. In fact, they were on the verge of building one of the coolest Corvettes of all time. The Sledgehammer. It made 898 extremely buff horses on a very safe boost. It was the second most popular sledgehammer of that era, next to Peter Gabriel's sledgehammer. sledgehammer. Callaway's own designer, Paul Deutschmann, created a body kit for it called the Aero Body that reduced lift and drag and pushed air to feed them twin turbs. Then, with a set of special high-speed Goodyear tires, the sledgehammer went out and hit 254 miles per hour. It set a new street legal speed record that stood for 11 years and hammered the Callaway name into the car enthusiast consciousness. While the C4 project took off, C5 got underway. Not the Corvette, I know, it's confusing. Project C5 was when Aston Martin asked Callaway to update the Virage's ancient V8. And it turned out so well that they asked for a race engine to use in their Group C AMR1 prototype. <laughs> Project C6 was with Corvettes again. Only this time, they were supernatural, as in naturally aspirated. Bored out 383 cubic inch versions of the new Chevy LT1 and LT5 V8s, making 400 to almost 500 hertz per. Hey guys, we'll get back to the story of Callaway, but I just want to tell you about something that we are super, super stoked about. Donut has a podcast. It's called Past Gas, and we dive deep into the weirdest and most exciting stories in automotive history. It's basically like an hour long up to speed, and Nolan is there. Again, Past Gas. Go subscribe and download it. I really think that you guys are going to like it. Plus, you can listen to it in your car, so I can creep into your life. There's a link in the description below. As the 90s went on, Callaway expanded their partnership with GM to make supernatural Camaros, supernatural Impala SS's, and even a Corvette ski boat. We could all see the handwriting on the wall that someday we would pull together all of those experiences and try to incorporate them into an automobile of our own. C7 was a totally bespoke, purpose-built, carbon chassis GT1 race car made completely in-house with a 650 horsepower supernatural engine. It was leading halfway through the 24 hours of Daytona before getting taken out by an electrical failure. By an electrical failure. 
Then the rules guys changed the rules and the C7 was ineligible to race after that. GM stayed Callaway's bread and butter and out of project C11 through C21, six are based on Corvettes. One is a Camaro and one is the GM family of trucks. But they did pick up some foreign manufacturers again in the late 90s. They modified 220 Range Rover 4.6 HSEs for Land Rover. Internal engine work, transmission tweaks, a new front diff, and a dual exhaust bumped power and acceleration up while still retaining the SUV's off-road capability. Mazda also tapped Callaway to develop the turbo system for the Mazda Speed Protégé. You hear that, Alex? Callaway made the turbo for your car. He's working, he's editing wheelhouse. Project C13 was, all right guys, look, I know that there's a lot of C's in this, so just try and stay with me. C13 was for their GM mates down on that. Holden Special Vehicles, the official high performance partner of Holden. Callaway took already modified HSV GTS 300 sedans and coupes with LS1 V8 variants, AKA Commodores and Monaros, and gave them better handling and 400 buff Brumbies. You want to learn a little bit more about Holden, check out this other episode of Up to Spark. When the much improved fifth gen Corvette came out, Callaway made a beast of that boy too. The Callaway C12 was developed to win the GT2 class at Le Mans. This thing is sick. It looks like an SLK from the back and a TVR from the front. They used beefed up versions of the new LS1 engine and took even more liberties with the exterior, leaving only the original greenhouse and changing literally everything else. The result was the wide body C12R that won pole position at the 2001 24 hours of Le Mans. They built only 25 C12 streetcars that sold for about 200K a pop. One of which ended up with my good friend, Dale Earnhardt Jr. It can't be just a showboat. It can't be just an overpowered sports car. It has to genuinely appeal to the man who's going to use it every day. By this time, GM saw they were missing out on a profitable market for higher performance versions of their cars. So they put their big shot manufacturer pants on and started throwing money and making their own hot boy Corvette, the Z06. It hauled balls and it was cheaper than any of the aftermarket tuner versions. <laughs> So, with the streetcar business slowing down, Callaway grabbed the Z06 and went back to racing. Project C15 is a Corvette built just for competition. In 2006, Callaway started developing C6 generation Z06s at their race shop based in Germany for FIA GT3 and ADAC GT Master Series racing. Their house team has been consistently at the top of the game, winning both team and driver's championships over the years. To keep up with Chevy's own Z06 and ZR1 models, Callaway streetcars resorted back to forced induction, only with superchargers this time around. The C16 was a built to order car that could be made as a coupe, a convertible, or a windshieldless speedster. It came with ultralight carbon magnesium wheels and carbon ceramic brakes that shaved 20 pounds of unsprung weight off each corner. In true bougie style, you could order any interior color you wanted. And the 6.2 liter LS3 got a supercharger to make 650 horses in the coupe and drop top, or 700 buff Hirschpurs on the exclusive speedster. Not only did the C16 speedster not have a windshield, it had no door handles, had no mirrors, had no freaking roof. So your 305,000 clams also paid for some more bougie stuff to make up for it. There were three cameras to display what's behind you on the nav screen. Touch sensitive areas called D-spots that pop the doors open. My D-spots in the back of my knee. Yuck and F1 spec carbon fiber helmets that were custom fit to the buyer and their favorite passenger. The helmets alone cost 10 grand each and were stored under the rear lid behind the seats. Seems like a windshield would have been cheaper and easier, but then you'd just be like all those Ferrari and Lambo drivers. So pfft. projects C18 through C21 are all supercharged and warranted current GM cars. You can order direct from Callaway. You can hit the drag strip in a new Camaro making 630 Stompy Clydesdales or 750 Stampede and Shires. Need a fast work truck or a faster soccer practice taxi? Choose from the Silverado, the Tahoe, the Suburban, the Escalade. Need to haul executives quickly? Try a 740 horsepower Cadillac CTS-V. And of course, you can still get a Corvette. The C7 comes in 627 and 
57 horsepower variants that'll do the quarter mile in 11 seconds or less. The SC757 has 777 thunderous pound feet of torque and will do zero to 60 in 2.8 seconds. That's like hypercar territory. Between C1 and C21, Callaway worked on other projects that didn't end up in glossy magazines. There was a space supercar prototype. There was also an ISO Revolta prototype designed with Gian Paolo Dallara and Marcello Gandini. You know, just a couple of Italian dudes who are pretty good at what they did, building race cars and designing Lamborghinis, but it all pales in comparison to the Callaway Cyclone V16 engine made out of four Yamaha. 1,000 cc inline four motorcycle engine. With a red line of 11 and a half thousand RPM and 640 horsepower, Reeves is saving this for something very special. He just doesn't know what it is yet. Mr. Reeves, if I have a suggestion, if I may, let's return to our Volkswagen roots and put that bad boy in a 1992 Eurospec Golf CL. Mint green metallic. Call me. Pop up, up and down headlights. 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 Pop up, up and down headlights.